my name is Amanda Brown. I'm a Darrington High School senior and a volunteer at the Glacier Peak Institute. I've been volunteering with GPI for about three years now. I participated in fisher releases, salmon, egg fertilization, uh, DNA collections, feed distribution, all sorts of things. This year I was selected to participate in the Environmental Stewardship Internship. In this internship, I am creating short informational videos about environmental topics. In a few seconds, you'll be watching my video about salmons and salmon and hatcheries, so I hope you enjoy. Thank you. The Pacific Northwest unique ecosystem heavily relies on nutrients that are provided from anadromous fish such as salmon and trout. Anadromous fish are fish that spend their lives both in freshwater and in saltwater. Unfortunately, salmon populations are steadily declining in the Pacific Northwest. This decrease is very disruptive towards the food web and ecology of the PNW. To combat this issue, fish hatcheries such as the one in Whitehorse have been created to supplement the population. The white horse hatchery houses an anadromous species such as Chinook salmon and steelhead trout. They also raise rainbow trout that are planted in lakes. On the other hand, Chinook and steelhead are released into the Stillaguamish River. The fish spend most of their lives at sea and when they are ready to spawn they return to the hatchery. The fish are able to come and go as they please but this also gives access to native wild fish. The fish shown here is a coho salmon that was a little late for spawning season. Since the white horse hatchery does not house coho salmon, the fish was caught and re-released into the river. Interestingly enough, coho salmon have white gums while chinook salmon have black gums. Like chinook, coho salmon are also endangered. However, they did have a very good run this year. Coho spawn in November and Chinook spawn in the fall and spring. At the end of their life, anadromous fish will return to the place where they were born. It is claimed that they can smell the water that they were born in. Hatchery born fish return to the hatchery where they are put into these runs. Shown here are some spawning steelhead fish. Their eggs and sperm are then collected and incubated. Here are the tanks that the eggs are incubated in after being spawned. After the fish reach finger length status, they are placed into these tanks to further grow. When they become smolts, they are put into earthen ponds such as this one until they are ready to go out to the ocean. After spawning, the fish will then die. Their carcasses are then scattered about for nutrient enrichment. When discarding the carcasses, it is important to saw off the tails so that researchers know that the fish were put here by humans and not by predators. These carcasses will provide nutrients for megafauna and microorganisms alike. Carnivores such as bears, eagles, and otters are most susceptible to salmon population decreases. Hatcheries and other conservation efforts are vital because the loss of salmon would completely devastate our entire ecosystem. Salmon are a symbol of life and balance. Their success dictates the success of the environment. Thank you to the Glacier Peak Institute for fostering my passion and love for salmon. And thank you to Flora Gibbs of the Department of Fish and Wildlife for showing me around the Whitehorse Hatchery and teaching me about salmon.